Welcome to the month of August. Now, God has great plans in store for you this month. Like I've always told you, how do I know? Because he sends his word. Praise God. Now, that's the only way we know God is interested in a thing. God is interested in a matter when he sends his word. Now, that's why as God's children, we must always look out for God's word. Well, now, when I say look out for God, so I'm not talking about running helter-skelter. I'm talking about searching your heart, keeping yourself in position to hear what the Lord will have to say. Just like Habakkuk says, look, I will set myself on the watch to hear what he is going to say to me. Moses told them, and Jesus re-echoed it, says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, how do I know the month of August is going to be a great month for me? Because the Lord has sent His word to me, praise God. And, and by extension, He's sending His word to you. Why? Because He knows I'm ministering to you. And because He knows I'm ministering to you, He tells me what to say to you. So the Lord has said to me, the month of August is a month of fruitfulness and productivity. You better embrace this. Now, when God says these things, what does he mean? He means he's demanding this of you because he is supplying the grace for this. Praise God. So get excited. It's going to be a great moment. Now, we, we are having a, 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 a fasting and prayer meeting going on. So you can join us. Uh, at the next watch, you know, we pray for about 40 minutes at every watch till the last watch of the day, which is 9 p.m. We, now, we started last night at 12 midnight, and then at every three hours, that is the seasons of the watch. So we pray for 40 minutes via Zoom. So join, join the next watch. You know, you can see the Zoom, uh, Zoom ID on the screen. You can join the next watch and let's just have a great time. And as we set ourselves in place to not just receive the word of God, but also to stir up ourselves in this month of August. I tell you this, God who have prepared himself for you for this month will see to it that you do not miss him. Many times, believers don't understand how much God loves them and is interested in them. You don't know. You don't. Now, it may just be that the months of January till July have not been so fantastic for you. But hear me. It doesn't matter how it has been. You are in a new month now. And what you should look out for is what, simply what God is saying. You may not be able to tell why the other months didn't work out. But I tell you something. If you walk in obedience to every command the Lord gives to you, then you are putting the bulk on him to perform his word that he has promised to you. I say this all the time. Walk with God to the extent that God will make you a promise. And there are believers that when they talk about the promise of God, all they know is to quote the Bible. They quote the oh, the promises of God. God has said, He is our shepherd, I shall not want. Hey, has He told you He's your shepherd? Have you heard that from His mouth? Oh, God supplies all our needs according to His riches in glory. Yes, has He told you? He will supply your needs according to his will. Oh, it's written in the Bible. The fact that it's written in the Bible doesn't mean you will experience it. Just like last month I shared with you, Jesus said in John chapter 5 and verse 39 and 40, you search the scriptures, very enlightening scripture. You search the scriptures because in the scriptures you think you have eternal life. And the scriptures testify of me, as Jesus speaking. And then he said, but you will not come to me so that you will have life. So many times when people go, oh, I confess the scripture, I confess the word, 
And some people say, oh, I was dealing with health. I had to get all the scriptures that have to do with health. And I started declaring and confessing them. And you see, I, you know, <laughs> I was talking to someone recently and I said, I don't know why people like wasting their time. You waste precious time. Now, why do I mean you waste precious time? There is a straightforward way to get things done. But instead of going that straightforward way, you just want to go round and round and round and round. But hear me, it shall not be so with you this month in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our life. Jesus is there. You want to deal with health issues. Instead of you to approach him, sit down with him and let him tell you what to do. You carry your Bible and you start searching all the scriptures that have to do with health. What are you researching? He is there. The scriptures will not give you health. It is Jesus that will give you health. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you the truth. It's Jesus that will give you health. The scriptures will not give you finances. It is Jesus that will give you finances. The scripture will not give you favor. It is Jesus that will give you favor. Oh, the Bible says the scriptures are able to make you wise. Yes. What is the wisdom? The wisdom is knowing how to meet Jesus. Simple. Every scripture directs you to the one who gives you life. Because the scriptures testify of him. And now he is here. What did he say in, 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 in Hebrews? He says, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Now, what does that tell you? What wisdom does that bring to you? Oh, it, it means right now he's with me. Yes, that's the wisdom of that scripture. That is the wisdom that scripture is giving to you. It is letting you know that even right now, Jesus is standing right here with me. Oh, I've told you this before. You know, someone said, ah, I did something wrong. So God left me. It's a lie. He didn't leave you. He will never leave you. Never. Never. Quote me to him that I said it to you. That he will never leave you. Oh, what if I did something very wrong? No, he can't leave you. He can't leave you. See that now? Why? Because he has already spoken his word. He says he will never leave. And I've always given the example of Cain. Cain killed his brother. God didn't leave Cain. Think about it. He was still speaking to Cain after Cain killed Abel. Adam and Eve sinned. Say, oh, when you sin, the presence of God leaves you. Who told you that lie? Who told you that lie? Now, you see, there are things we teach to encourage people to stay away from sin. But that doesn't mean we should tell a lie. You understand what I'm saying? Because the truth about it is, one day they will grow up to find out the truth. And when they find out the truth, now it will be difficult to control them at that point. So why don't you tell the truth from the beginning? See, we don't sin because we are afraid God's presence will leave us. We don't sin because it is not in his character to sin. So because we are walking to be like him, the things that are wrong, we naturally just begin to eliminate them in our lives. And even that is not our own doing. The more we look at him, the more we are becoming him. Now that's how you know that you're truly walking with God. You're truly walking in the light. Because you yourself will realize that the urges that you used to face before, you used to have before, to do wrong, will just suddenly begin to disappear from you. You, you wake up one day and realize, hey, maybe you always tell lies. It, it's just natural for you to tell lies. But you see, when you begin to feed on God's word. Now, when I mean feed on God's word, I'm not just talking about reading the Bible. I'm talking about having fellowship with the Lord, the Spirit of God ministering to you. Now, that's where life, if that is not happening in your life, brothers and sisters, it's religion that you're doing. You are not walking with God. You are only walking with laid down principles, laid down um, processes. That's all you're doing. And if God is not bound to accept you, when you do that, he is not bound to accept you. That's why I, I try to make these things clear. See, 
Now you remember Jacob. Jacob told Esau, hey, go to the field, get me an animal, make some venison, so that let I will eat and then my soul will bless you. Now that's where we got this thing of blessing, I will bless you, you know, from. And then he did, but you know the story, Jacob was smarter and Jacob brought the venison and he began to pray for him and bless him with the fatherly blessing. But then there is something Jacob said when you read the scripture. He said, may God bless you with the blessing of Abraham. I remember when I first saw that, I mean, with understanding now, I thought about it. He didn't transfer the Abrahamic blessing to Jacob. He prayed that God will transfer it to Jacob because see, that blessing is only transferred by God. Now there is the father's blessing that a father can give. But the real blesser is God. And when he prayed that prayer, it was left for God to answer. And God did answer that prayer. How did God answer that prayer? God appeared to Jacob by himself and said to him that I am blessing you with the blessing of Abraham, your father. So, you see, it was Jacob's obedience even though the father had laid hands on him, it was his own obedience to the instruction of his father that made him to meet God. But until he met God, there is no way that blessing can come upon his life. That's why Esau didn't get the Abrahamic blessing. And that's how it works. So if you walk with God, you will get his words to come up. But if you stick with religion, God owes you nothing. Oh, so that's why you hear people say, I've been tithing for so long. I've not seen any benefits in my life. Sorry. I'm sorry to tell you this. I, I, no, I'm, I'm so sorry to tell you this. It sounds harsh, but the truth is, are you sure God has been receiving your tithes? And what about, but I give it, I give 10%, and I give it every month, and I give it in church. Yes, that's what I'm asking you. Are you sure? God receives your tithe. How do you know he receives your tithe? Oh, I give it in church. No, that's not proof that he receives it. Has God ever spoke to you about your tithe before? I'm using this because that's what most people say. Has he spoken to you about it before? And does he have to speak to me? Oh, whose money is it? Whose money is the tithe? It's not God's money. So doesn't he have the right to tell you what to do with his money? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. See, God has created avenues for us to always come to him. But many times, because of lack of knowledge, because of stubbornness or wrong teaching, wrong understanding, we don't go to him. So we, we, we want to assume we have done what is right so God should know what to do without meeting him. So we avoid him. I talk to people sometimes, say, why don't you talk to God about it? And then the response are always sometimes shocking. They say, ah, no, I don't want the one that God will tell me to do what I don't want to do. Come on now. So what do you want to do? You want to do what God will not bless. Hear me, it's a new month. And it's right, you start it properly and start it right. First and foremost is to get God's word for you. I have just declared to you that the Lord said this month, be concerned about being fruitful and productive. That's what God is concerned about. He wants to bring out fruitfulness in your life. So what do you do? Now, if you believe I'm sent from God, you will take that word and go to him. See, I didn't say take that word and run with it. I said take that word. Now it has given you some kind of direction. Take that word and go to him. I say, Lord, Pastor George, because I believe you sent him. Just said this from you. Lord, talk to me about it. Lord, in, in what area do you want to help? Now you are personalizing the word. 
Personalizing the word means hearing that word by yourself from the mouth of God. Now that's how these things work. Because if he doesn't put a word to you, he owes you nothing. So don't just do that religious thing we do. Oh, don't even go and print a sticker. My month of productivity and fruitfulness. He said, that's what our man of God declared. It won't work like that. It will work when you go on your knees and say, Father, talk to me about being fruitful and productive. I want to hear you talk to me about it. See, when he speaks to you about it, you see that word coming out of his mouth, it will energize you. It will strengthen you. And it will set you on the right course. Then God himself and all the angels will begin to organize your life for fruitfulness and productivity. I want to pray for you now. I believe I've instructed you. This one instruction can carry you for the rest of your life if you will obey. But I pray for you now. I declare over your life that the voice of God will come to you in clarity and quickly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes and open your understanding to see what fruitfulness he's talking about. What productivity he's talking about. And I pray that whatever God have committed in your hands, it will rise this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I see a certain pastor. You've been concerned about the ministry that God put in your hands. Now I know many times we are concerned about it, but you are specifically worried about increase and productivity. I hear the Lord say that I should tell you that beginning from this month, he will begin to multiply not just people and he's going to bring quality people your way but also he is going to multiply the knowledge of God coming to you coming from you to them and you your members will begin to be grounded in him and then also you are going to begin to see increase in their finances and well-being and also you will see increase in the ministry oh thank you lord jesus father confirm these words in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ i bless you this month walk in fruitfulness be productive in every way in the name of the lord jesus i declare laxity will not be your portion this month you will be accurate in all that you do Clarity of mind, clarity of purpose shall be your portion. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not struggle throughout this month. Beginning from this day, I declare your days of struggling are over, completely over. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every new thing you are beginning, you are starting this month, it will flourish. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you beginning a new job this month, I declare, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will find home in this job that you are beginning. And what I mean by that is, the Spirit of God will cause you to settle and therefore he will give you peace in this particular job and from this point you will begin to flourish in all sides you will flourish in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ God is bringing to you quality clients quality clients that you have not gotten from the time you started your business up till now 
Oh, these are the doings of the Lord. Praise God. Because He's causing you to be fruitful. He's causing you to be productive. Therefore, receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Now I've got lots and lots of things the Lord have laid in my heart to share with you. And we're going to start that tomorrow. Like I said earlier, join the prayer meeting going on. Join us at the next watch and be blessed. I love you very much. Have a wonderful month in this August. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.